Hello and welcome to a blue pizza where we're going back to basics. Now in today's Britain, most of us have a lot of things that we need to make our lives as comfortable as possible right at our fingertips. But we wondered what life would be like if our luxuries were taken away. And instead of choosing whatever we wanted from the shelves of well-stocked shops, we had to live off the land. You can see what happened when the boys did just that a little bit later. But first up, as a self-confessed city girl, you can imagine just how I felt when survival expert Ray Mears invited me to join him for a night in the wilderness. So where exactly are we going, Ray? I'm going to take you into the heart of the forest, uh, Connie. It's a really beautiful spot we're going to. There was no time to waste. Light was already starting to fade as we reached the woodland. This is your rucksack. <gasps> That's a big That's rucksack. That's got everything you need. That's a massive safe. rucksack. <laughs> well, oh, it's not too am heavy. Am I going to get a backache from this? Connie, in there we've got sensible camping equipment, all the things that we need to stay safe in the right, forest. Because you, you shouldn't just come out. If you got lost or something mm -hmm. like that, you'd be in trouble. With all that, we're not. That's our life support. So, right, to know where you're going, do you need a compass? Yeah, I have a compass and a map with me, but uh, I know this particular area like the back of my hand. I felt in safe hands, but it was starting to get chilly. With no central heating, we had to gather fuel for tonight's fire. You see this tree that's fallen down? Mm -hmm. This is a silver birch tree. Oh, and yeah. we use the I bark for making fire. But we only take the bark from trees that have fallen over, like these ones. And you can, you can see here that we've got all this bark that just wants to come off from the rotten wood. Yeah. You want to pull some of that off? Yeah. That's good. If it's got any bits on the back like that, just break those off. So we just have this, this, the outer part. Kindling. We can sort that later on anyway, I think. Yes. The way the sun is, we'll I think we should crack on. Time it's, to make tracks, yeah? It's getting dark. Yeah. Before we were plunged into total darkness, we needed to find somewhere to sleep, but I knew it wouldn't be my comfy bed. These are going to be your trees to put your camp up in. They're the right distance apart. Yeah. And I think I'll put mine up just over here. So it's this tree and that tree, yeah? No, Connie, it's that tree and that one. Right. Ugh, there goes the bag. OK. This is what we call a hoochie. Is this like the ceiling, the roof? That's the roof. That's yeah. what keeps the rain out. When we tie this up, we try to tie all knots that can be quickly released in the morning. We go around our hand, Yeah. fingers down, fingers up, pull a loop through. OK. So, Connie, there, that's my roof up. Nice. OK, and now what I need to do is put my hammock up underneath that. It's very important to make sure our hammock's level. Otherwise, you slide to one end in the night. Well, he's clearly done that before. Meanwhile, my camp is still in my rucksack. So uh, that's, he's in his, look at that, he's in his hammock. Oh, well, you're looking very comfy, Ray, but unfortunately, <laughs> I think I need a bit of help. Yeah, I think you are. Putting mine together. I'll be honest with you, the first time you set up a camp like this, it's best to do it in daylight, and of course, we've run out of daylight. So it's You can really say that difficult. again. <laughs> I will give you a lot of help. Come on, let's go and do mine. Come on, let's get it done. Oh, I'm caught in the branches. I felt completely out of my depth and realised how hard living in the wilds is if you don't know what you're doing. I can't remember the knots, so I'm just going to tie a little bow and then he can deal with it when he gets here. I think with the rain coming, I will put this up now swiftly for you. I found my little light. I managed yeah, to do that. Yeah, that's good. You can see it's quite large, so you'll be comfortable so in there. So cool. Ray has spent his life learning bushcraft in every corner of the globe and has used his expertise to train everyone from me to the SAS. His skills apply as much to the desert plains as the British woodlands. What we're doing here is what I would say is applied bushcraft, where we're taking with us a few modern tools like our shelters and our cooking pots to make life comfortable and so that we don't leave much trace of our presence. And what is it that you love so much about being out here? I think there are several, several things. I think, firstly, you're always learning. If there's one thing you can say about bushcraft, is it's the, the more that you know, the more you realise you don't know. And everything you learn makes life more comfortable and easier and more rewarding. Um, but I guess overall, the thing I like about it 
is it makes me feel very, very much a part of nature. When I look at the trees around me and the animals, I realise that I'm sharing my lifetime on the earth with all of these things around me. Well, Connie, that looks like the billy cans are just starting to boil, isn't it? Time to get dinner on. I don't know about you, but I'm famished. Yeah, I am absolutely starving. This is our little kitchen area. So how can you tell, can you hear the, the water spoil? Yeah, I can hear it and now I can see the see steam the coming steam, out. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Okay, I'm absolutely starving, so here goes. Mmm, that is actually really good. I don't know whether it's because I'm so hungry or because it's really good. It's pasta, uh, tinned mackerel and tomato sauce and it's yum. And I've got a whole billy can of it. Mmm, that's good. Well, Con, seeing as you like it so much, how about a tin of nice mackerel? Oh, that whiff, Simon, you are mm. so weird. It's lovely. Now I'm going to stick with my cream cake. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think I would if I were you, <laughs> Actually, the bakery is the first place that me and Simon went when we went back to living off the land in the time of the Anglo-Saxons.